Hey garden friends, I am going to collect some seeds from a few things, few plants today and a few other garden chores. Um, I have geraniums that have seeds on them and my petunias, my wave petunias that go to seed. So let's collect some of those and do a few other garden cleanup chores and play in the garden on this beautiful day. It's only going to get in the 70s today. Um, it was real chilly this morning and now it's warmed up a little bit so I can get out here comfortably. I'm not a cold weather outdoor person, so I like it a little bit warmer. Anyways, let's get going on our few chores. Now this is the first plant we're going to get some seeds from. Can you see these? I'm sure you can. And I'll zoom up. But these are the geranium seeds and they've got the little white fluffy tail on it and I have my little seed packets that I make I had to tape this one I couldn't find my glue but anyways um, a lot of times I paint them with the flowers that they have in them this is cosmos but I'm not collecting cosmos seeds yet this is the white geranium I don't have anything on it yet but I will write the name right here now these little seed packet the pattern for these is on my blog uh, at flowerpatchfarmhouse.com on my seed saving post. So you can find it there and download it for your use. I, like I said, normally I glue this shut, but I couldn't find the glue. That's why I have this ugly tape on it. But I just drop these seeds all in this envelope. Whoops, dropped one. And these are ready to sew. I may save some and go sew them. I have a whole post and video on sowing zonal geranium seeds and how I grow them from seed. Now, make sure you remember that even though you grow from the white geranium, you may not get white geraniums from the seed because the little bees go around my garden to all the geraniums. Some are red, some are salmon, some are orange, and they pollinate them and it can have the genetics of any of those colors in it. And you can get any of those colors. Or it may come up with a whole new color. So that's always the fun thing with growing from seeds. That it's a total, not total, but it can be quite a surprise. Let's see, I think I got all of those saved. Now this one down here, this flower, can uh, go to seed later. I'm going to cut these ones back. Oops, there's one I missed cut these stems back and I'm going to prepare this geranium for winter storage and um, I'm not sure this one's kind of big so I probably will take some cuttings from it to start some pretty thick stems and then um, this one um, I will when it's closer to freezing I will just cut it off right down here at the nub and put the whole container in my basement. Now I could try to I could try to put this whole plant indoors under grow lights. I just don't have room. So that is that. I would spray this. I have a new spray I've been trying for bugs and I like it because it's uh, made with peppermint and tea tree oil so uh, soap and um, I'm testing it to see because I always treat them for bugs before putting them indoors or storing them. So there's that geranium and I will go check and see if I have any more geraniums that have seeds on them and get me another envelope. I had quite a few seeds in on this one. That's great. So the more seeds you sow, the more chance you have for success. So down here, I want to show you this foxglove. I just transplanted this from another portion of the garden and plopped it here because I wanted it here on this wall. And look how wonderful it's doing. Didn't even miss a beat. I have a lot of foxgloves that are coming up in areas that I don't want them. And I'm going to move them around the garden. I've got some aphids on me. 
Um, anyways, so that is that. Let me see. Is that, I've got gopher holes or gopher mounds all over in this bed. So it makes me glad that I left my roses in um, pots. This, uh, that's, they don't bother the foxglove, so it's no big deal for that. And other things, they're not bothering. Sometimes they nibble on my irises, though, but they haven't killed them off or inhibited too much of their blooming. So I don't worry about the irises either. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to find a foxglove I need to dig up, and I'll just show you how to do it. It's pretty easy. So down here is one. You can see... Right here is hollyhock too, but here's the foxglove that I want to move. And I don't really want the hollyhock, so I will dig that out and just get that foxglove. My little shovel is not too far, and I will get that dug up. You just try to get really deep so you get the majority of the root. Looks like it's been moist here for a little bit. And I just go down with my shovel, hit a rock, and dig that little thing up. Now there's a iris right there. That's one to get hung up on. And there you have it. So I got a good amount of the root, and now we will transplant that to another spot in the garden. It's a little glary in here, so forgive the bright sun coming in. But I had said I was going to plant that foxglove in the ground, in the garden. But I thought, you know what, some people, you may not know where you want to put it. When you first dig them up, you're just digging them up in areas you don't want them. And I have a lot like that. So I'm going to show you. I just pot them up. And um, here's it's a little recycled pot. It's from a proven winner's plant. I don't know which one I had gotten in this one. But it doesn't matter because we are just going to plant up the foxglove I just dug up. So let me reach for it here. So it has really nice root system on it and fit in there until I have a spot for it. Picked out and I just put some soil in it. This is my DIY potting soil, but any good potting soil will work. I have a video and a blog post on how I make my DIY potting soil. Now this one, I didn't put any um, coconut core in it. Um, Koya, however people pronounce it. I just added some perlite for moisture retention and drainage. This is um, the compost I get from a local turkey, uh, organic turkey farm. And it's wonderful to make potting soil with. And I just pot it up, make sure the, the roots are down in there. And then I give it a good drink of water. I put it in something. Let me get a little dish that um, will help it to absorb the water. Because it first will just run through. You want this soil to get good and moist and hold the water. So I have a jug of water I had filled and I just let it fill in there until there's maybe half an inch deep. And then I'll let it sit in that bit of water until it absorbs it. And then I'll pull this out of the dish. And I just keep it in here. Or you could also put it out in the garden in the shade um, just so the roots or the plant has a chance to recover from the shock of being dug up and replanted. So there is a pretty little foxglove. I have no idea what color this is. Could be pink or it could be white because I had both of those this year. I've got on order another selection has some really dark colors um, and I'm looking forward to growing those from seed this next season. So I'm going to put this over here on this shelf where it will be fine for now. So let's go to our next chore. I did want to mention you can dig them up when they are smaller than that. I have a bunch out there that are real tiny and I do want to get them moved. So that's another, you don't have to wait till they get that large. Next up, I am going to dig up, and I don't even know if you can see it back here, under here, 
this or all of these boxwoods that I stuck these just directly cuttings directly in the soil here beside this fire ring and to root them and they have rooted and they're growing beautifully along with a few weeds uh, but this fire ring is moving and um, so these will have to move too so I'm going to hopefully get down deep enough I don't know how oh there's actually two here one there and one there okay we'll start with this one Oh my goodness, nice deep roots. I can feel them and I'm working underneath that. And the roots. I'm just tugging to see how much deeper I need to dig. Now I probably will break off some of the roots, but that's okay. They will survive this and I can pot it up into this pot to grow on until I get the other centerpiece planted and I will do the boxwood around it. I just think that would be such a pretty, pretty look. So I wanted to put it in a one gallon rather than a four inch pot just so it had plenty of room to keep on growing. And I might add a little bit of the soil from here, from the ground. It won't hurt it, it won't get too pat. This is very loose, free draining soil. And hopefully I'm in the camera for you. And I'm just filling this pot up with this potting soil. And I will water it well and I'll put it in a shady spot for it to recover. And then if um, I don't get the new centerpiece done and these replanted, this fall, I will save these and replant them around it in the spring. So I'll set that aside and I have a few more to go. Surprised they grew underneath this petunia shading them so much. I need to get some more soil. See, look at that wonderful garden worm. Go your way, little worm. Beautiful, beautiful. They aerate, they create beautiful castings and feed my plants naturally. So the other one was under here somewhere. It's a little bitty one. I think this one I started later and that one too. So a couple more to get going. That right here that I moved back, that is some alfalfa straw that I had used or have up of a hay as compost material, um, as mulch. Look at the roots on that baby, beautiful. So one more pot. A little bit of that soil, and I grab my other soil. Okay. Beautiful, beautiful. So that's six. So on this pretty petunia. This is uh, a volunteer from last year. I had planted these pink wave petunias in this container and this year they came up. I, this year I planted this color in here, this lilac, but these pink ones were volunteer from the seeds that fell last year. And I will show you a seed pod. Now 
right here is one that's still green. This is where the flower fades and then it develops the seed pod right at the base here of where the flower is. So back here, let me see if this one might be in the way, is some dried seed pods. And those are the ones I'm gonna collect today. I do it in a fancy old yogurt tub that's been scrubbed clean. And then I just get below the seed pod and then I nip it off in there. And I do that all along here. You see some of the seeds are on the back, stuck on the back of that petunia. But here the seed pod can go in there. And I just hunt through. Now I don't try to just get the pink. And the reason being that the bees, as in the uh, geranium one, have been going from petunia to petunia and they've cross-pollinated them. So I don't know exactly. I may get a tons of these pink. Look at this pink one. How it's a more of a different shade. See that? That's more of a, not a mauve. What am I thinking? I can't think of that. Dusky pink. But anyway, so I can get various colors. Now down here is a whole bunch that have gone to seed. Now I can just trim off if it's easier. That limb, limb, that little branch, and then just start collecting them. I could set my tub down and just go along and collect all of the seeds in that one. All the seed pods. It won't hurt the plant. It won't stop it from blooming. Nothing. So let me move you over so you can see me collecting the seeds. So I just moved over here on my potting bench. One of my begonias that I planted this winter and it just never really did anything. So I'm going to overwinter it inside my greenhouse. But anyways, that being said, let's get some more of these seed pods. Just go along and dropping them in here. Now I can put some of these in an envelope like I did the geraniums or I can just keep them in this tub as long as I keep it cool and dry. They will be fine. And then come early spring, I can dump them in one of my milk jugs as I did uh, my winter sewing. I did that this winter. Here, let me see over here. I dumped a bunch of these seeds into that uh, milk jug like I do the winter sewing and I got tons of petunias and I mean tons as well as um, I had petunias coming up in tons of my pots that I had had them growing in. So this the beauty of the wave petunias is they do go to seed and they're pretty tough. You know wave petunias will last through a little bit of frost. It won't, it's not necessarily a death knell for them. So that's nice too. So I think I have all the dried pods dropped off here. And then I will just compost this and some of the seeds will be in there. And sometimes um, when I use that compost, I get petunias too. Cause look, there is seeds all over those leaves. I'm a little late in getting to this, but that doesn't matter. They'll still be usable. And I still have tons in there. Look at that. And that's just one little branch from that plant. I have a million plants. Like you said, you've seen, you had seen my um, centerpiece. That's all purple wave petunias. And I will collect seeds from that as well once they have gone to seed. They, um, did. I checked them and I didn't see very many seed pods, so I wasn't going to collect until then. So there is the petunia seed collecting. Do you see this right here? This is a milk jug. This is the containers. If you've seen my winter sewing posts or um, videos, how what I use to winter sow seeds and then over, you know, put them out in winter and then in spring they're sprouting. But I decided to spring sow or early summer sow my petunias the same way, except it's just a different time of year. And look, this thing is just full. In fact, I should have pulled these out and planted them up either separately or in the ground sooner. I just haven't gotten to that. Um, and here it is towards the end of August, but they're still gorgeous. I could still do it and will do it because they will not only continue to bloom beautifully 
they will produce more seeds that I can collect and sow the same way next spring. I'm gonna try um, winter sowing petunias, not indoors, but outdoors and see what happens. Since so many of these come up in the pots that I just leave outdoors, I think it will work. Um, I have started some indoors, but if you don't have room or uh, lights, etc., winter sowing these may be the ticket for you. So I'm gonna experiment with that this winter and I'll let you know how that turns out. But we know it works in spring, late spring, early summer. Yeah. I'm just showing you really quick where I planted the cuttings, um, the boxwood cuttings that I had rooted in the ground and then dug up and they're just planted right along here. This is my side garden against the house that I've totally revamped. I'm gonna have the video of what it looked like when I started and in progress. And here's a couple more of the boxwoods. They're all gonna, they're gonna line the pathway along with these nepetas. These are cat's pajamas nepetas. I got them on the clearance rack at Lowe's and um, I think they'll do great here. I got them at a really great price. They looked a real, really sad, but I knew they would recover and um, they will make a beautiful border, be pretty in blue and with the green of the boxwoods, I think they will do great. So it was relatively inexpensive. The boxwoods are free because I got them from cuttings that I did and did a whole video and blog post on. To see some other foxgloves that I transplanted, right down here is a couple. They're looking pretty ratty only because our gutters uh, leak horribly. And so they really got pummeled when we had that called cyclone bomb where we got 10 inches of rain in like, 24 to 48 hours and it was just tremendous but they will recover there's another one up there so these got moved from other parts of the garden and I still have more to either pull out or transplant into areas so there's an update on those so that my friends is an update on the garden chores that I did um, in October I still have a lot. there's a lot more chores I have to do I need to prune back my Eden climbing rows um, I'm going to move the one Agastache that it kind of obscures a beautiful rose and other things, but I, I just chip away at it. I'm not uh, worried about everything being neat and tidy for winter because we're going to get snow and it's going to be covered anyways, so it's no big deal. And I'm anxious for the boxwoods and stuff like that to grow to have some winter green or color, at, or I should say more like spring early spring when things are looking pretty drab. But um, like these beautiful boxwoods are beautiful throughout the season. Hopefully it's in the camera for you. And this one over here. Um, these are the green mountain ones. They get they have the tall spire shape rather than short and stubby. So I have been taking cuttings from these to get some more to add into the secret cottage garden um, and have more evergreen colors in there. So it's not quite so drab in the spring. And I may. Here, I'm just going to give you a quick look at what I mean by winter drab. And I hope to see you in the next video where I will again have more of what I'm accomplishing out here. I've been kind of negligent on videos only because uh, we're renovating in the house and that has taken all of my time. So I hope you join me in my next video where I will update you on what is going on out here. Alrighty, I'll see you later. Really quickly, I'm out in the greenhouse on this rainy morning and I wanted to show you these. These are sprouts of the white geranium seeds that I had collected earlier in the video. And I decided to pot some up to see if I could get them to germinate. And sure enough, look, I have four of them. And let me see, out of six, one, two, three, yeah, four out of six have germinated and are growing. We've had some mild fall temperatures, including the nights, so um, out here it's just fine. I would probably move them into my shelf under lights in my office as soon as it starts getting colder. But in the meantime, they're loving life. Just so you know, I have an entire blog post and I think a video on growing zonal geraniums or pelagoniums from seed.